Lawmakers testify on a series of gun safety bills. Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Byron Scott. And I'm Patricia Vallone. Thank you for joining us this evening. Well, the recent spike in gun violence on college campuses nationwide has Maryland lawmakers considering a series of gun control measures. The package of bills includes a ban on deadly weapons on, on public college campuses, court requirements to keep guns out of the hands of domestic violence abusers, and prevents those on the terrorist watch list from buying firearms. Congressman Chris Van Hollen, a Democrat, was in Annapolis along with public safety officials to testify in favor of the legislation before the Senate Judicial Proceedings Committee. Too dangerous to board an airplane. Uh, it doesn't make sense that you should be able to walk down the street and buy a semi-automatic weapon. Uh, and so we want to be very clear that in Maryland, if you're someone who's on the terrorist watch list, you can't buy a gun. Uh, we've been trying to pass this legislation at the federal level. Uh, I've been trying for years to get this common sense measure through. We're going to keep pushing at the federal level. It's our policy nonetheless at the University of Maryland College Park and across uh, all of our campuses. As you know, we have 11 campuses. What it does is give our policy the strength of law. And it's consistent with uh, a number of other institutions. So uh, we feel it's a good bill. It's for our student safety. You can't and Democratic leaders have said that the measures are priorities this General Assembly session. And Prince George's state's attorney, uh, Angela Alsobrook, says the courts need to do a better job of protecting the victims of domestic violence. This comes two days after that double murder in Chevrolet. Investigators say a woman who was found shot to death in an apartment along with her stepsister on Monday helped to get the killer released from jail days earlier. Kevin Reynolds was being held on domestic violence charges when the victim, his girlfriend, Tarika Jones, appeared at a bond hearing and said she didn't want to go ahead with the charges and disputed officer's version of events. A judge lowered the bond and Jones paid to have Reynolds released. A few days later, she was dead. This is the worst case scenario. Always. This is the absolute worst case scenario. This is, I think, every prosecutor's nightmare. Um, this is what we work against all the time is we want to keep people safe. And yeah, quite honestly, this is this is worst case scenario for us. A Reynolds was found dead yesterday in Virginia. Investigators say it appears he took his life. And with multiple domestic violence related deaths over the last few months in Prince George's, a delegate is sponsoring a bill that will expand the definition of abuse. At a press conference in the state capitol this afternoon, a delegate Angela Angel introduced House Bill 1396. The measure will include written and electronic harassment and defacing property in Maryland's law as part of domestic violence. The way that the laws of our state read, a domestic partner could literally come and destroy property over and over again, and the other partner, the victim, could never receive an order ordering them to stop. That's ridiculous. My former husband was John Allen Muhammad, the D.C. sniper. What most people don't know is that I was the intended target. He was killing innocent people to cover up my murder so that he could come in and get custody of our children. So it was a domestic violence child custody issue. I support this bill because it will help to cover a loophole that has been missing. If passed, the bill will also require schools to hold lessons on dating and relationship violence. While there's been much speculation about the future of the FBI building and whether its new home will be in Maryland or Virginia. Well, Prince George's County Executive Rashern Baker sounds very confident that the headquarters will be on his turf. Denise Douglas now with more information. What's happening? Yeah, you know, this would be major. And mm -hmm. as the executive, county executive said earlier today, it would be the crown jewel for Prince George's Counter County. He spoke to the business roundtable today. Not only would the FBI headquarters in Prince George's County mean more jobs, but the county executive pointed out that the prestige of a federal agency and a change in perception for Prince George's are two other benefits. There are two locations in Maryland and one in Virginia under consideration. So I asked Mr. Baker why he felt so confident now that the agency could be moving to the county. I think you look at the, the two sites that we have and what after meetings with not just higher ups in the FBI, but also in um, uh, our federal delegation with Senator Mikulski uh, leading the effort. Um, everything the president's talked about of it being near a metro station and transit oriented, that right there is going to be a key to it. So I think, I think we're, we're, we're in good shape. 
County Executive also talked about numerous development projects underway, including the MGM Casino. He told business leaders at the luncheon that they can benefit from the growth. Prince George's biz base businesses are going to be able to actually participate, uh, not just in MGM, I know people talk about that all the time, but New Carrollton development around that metro system is going to offer our businesses an, uh, an opportunity. Uh, downtown Largo as the redevelopment of some office buildings that the county has actually purchased. Um, it's going to be the, the hospital, which is going to be a $700 million uh, facility where our businesses can come in there. Um, you're going to see outside business come, you know, uh, corporations come in. About 40 business leaders and others attended the luncheon, which was held at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. I understand also that he talked about the Deontay Carraway case among the things he spoke about today. What did he say? Yeah, you know, he got extremely emotional mm -hmm. when he touched on that. He said at one point he even cried because he has kids as well. He basically said, and I asked him, I said, well, what, what happens now? And he says that, you know, he wants to make sure that policies are put in place that make a difference and that, you know, in terms of background checks on people who are taking care of kids are more stringent. Mm -hmm. He definitely says that, you know, when kids go home to their parents, he wants to make sure that parents have confidence that they've been safe all day. Okay. All right. All thanks, right. Denise. Thanks. Well, a van overturns on Route 202, leaving two adults and one child injured. The accident took place this afternoon on Route 202 at St. Joseph Drive. The cause is still unknown. According to rescue officials, firefighters had to pry the three out of the vehicle. They all face serious non-life-threatening injuries. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Byron Scott.